New recording setup. Less background noise, more heat. Chapter 12. Be systematic. Men should be systematic in their business. A person who does business by rule, having a time and place for everything, doing his work promptly, will accomplish twice as much and with half the trouble as him who does it carelessly and slipshod. By introducing system into all your transactions, doing one thing at a time, always meeting appointments with punctuality, you find leisure for pastime and recreation. Recreation. Whereas, a man who only half does one thing, then turns to something else and half does that, will have his business at loose ends and will never know when his day's work is done, for it never will be done. Of course, there's a limit to all these rules. We must try to preserve the happy medium, for there is such thing as being too systematic. There are men and women, for instance, who put away things so carefully they can never find them again. It is much like the red tape formality at Washington in Mr. Dickens' circumlocation office, all theory and no result. When the Astor House was first started in New York City, it was undoubtedly the best hotel in the country. The proprietors had learned a good deal in Europe regarding hotels, and the landlords were proud of the rigid system which pervaded every department of their great establishment. When 12 o'clock at night arrived, and there were a number of guests around, one of the proprietors would say, Touch that bell, John, in two minutes, 60 serv- and in two minutes, 60 servants with a water bucket in each hand would present themselves in a hall. This, said the landlord, addressing his guests, is our fire bell. It will show you we are quite safe here. We do everything systematically. This was before the Croton water was introduced into the city. They sometimes carried their water system too far. On one occasion, when the hotel was thronged with guests, one of the waiters was suddenly indisposed, and although there were 50 waiters in the hotel, the landlord thought he must have his full complement or his system would be interfered with. And I could still hear that fucking train through all this. Just before dinner time, he... Oh, my fucking God. Just before dinner time, he rushed downstairs and said, There must be another waiter. I'm one waiter short. What could I do? He happened to see Boots, the Irishman. Pat, said he, wash your hands and face, take that white apron and come to the dining room in five minutes. Presently, Pat appeared as required, and the proprietor said, All right, now, Pat, you must stand behind these two chairs and wait on the gentleman who will occupy them. Did you ever act as a waiter? I know all about it, sure, but I never did. Like the Irish pilot, on one occasion when... The captain, thinking he was considerably out of his course, asked, Are you certain you understand what you're doing? Oh, shit. Pat said, Sure, and I know, (laughs) sure, and I knows every rock in the channel. That moment, bang, thumped the vessel against the rock. Ah, be jabbers. And that is one of them, continued the pilot. But to return to the dining room. Pat, said the landlord, Here we do everything systematically. You must first give the gentlemen each a plate of soup, and when they finish that, ask them what they will have next. Pat replied, Ah, I understand perfectly the uh, virtues of the shishtam. Nice, nice Irish. Very soon came in the guests. The plate of soup was placed in front of them. One of Pat's two gentlemen ate the soup, and the other did not care for it. He said, Waiter, take this plate away and bring me some fish. Pat looked at the untasted plate of soup and remembering the injunctions of the landlord regarded to system, replied, Not till you have ate your soup. Let me get the inflection right because it's written in Gaelic. Not till ye have ate your soup. Soup. I can't do Gaelic. Of course that was carrying system entirely too far. Chapter 13. Read the newspapers. Always take a trustworthy paper and thus keep thoroughly posted in regard to the transactions of the world. He is without a newspaper is cut off from his species. In these days of telegraphs and steam, many important inventions and improvements in every branch of trade are being made, and he who doesn't consult the newspapers will soon find himself and his business left out in the cold. Chapter 14. Beware of Outside Operations We sometimes see men who have obtained fortunes suddenly become uh, poor. In many cases, this arises from intemperance and often from gaming and other bad habits. Frequently it occurs because a man has been engaged in outside operations of some sort. 
when he gets his rich when he gets rich in his le- legitimate business he is told of a grand speculation where he can make a score of thousands he is constantly flattered by his friends who tell him that he is born lucky and that everything he touches turns to gold now if he forgets that his economical habits his restitude restitude of conduct and a personal attention to a business which he understood caused his success in life he will listen to the siren voices and to them he says i will put in twenty thousand dollars i have been lucky and my good luck will soon bring me back sixty thousand dollars a few days elapse and it is discovered he must put in ten thousand dollars more soon after he is told it is all right but certain matters not foreseen require an advance of twenty thousand dollars more which will bring him a rich harvest but before the time comes around to realize the bubble burst he loses all and is possessed of and then he learns what he ought to he loses all he is let me start the whole thing over again i wanted to do this perfect but i'm not a perfect person a few days elapse and it is discovered he must put in tens of thousands of dollars more after he is told yeah it's all right but certain matters not foreseen require an advance of twenty thousand dollars more which will bring him a rich harvest but before the time comes around to realize the bubble bursts he loses all he is possessed of and he learns what he ought to have known at the first that however successful a man may be in his own business if he turns from that and engages in business which he doesn't understand he is like samson when shorn of his locks his strength is departed and he becomes like other men if a man has plenty of money he ought to invest something in everything that appears to promise success and that will probably benefit mankind but let the sums of thus invested be moderate in amount and never let a man foolishly jeopardize a fortune that he has earned by a legitimate way investing in things which he has no experience like me and crypto i told that man oh my bad chapter 15 don't endorse without security i told that no man ought to ever endorse a note or become security for any man be it his father or brother to a greater extent than he can afford to lose and care nothing about without taking good security Here's a man that is worth $20,000. He is doing a thriving manufacturing or mercantile trade. Uh, you are retired on living on your own money. He comes to you and says, You are aware that I'm worth $20,000 and don't owe a dollar. If I had $5,000 in cash, I could purchase a particular lot of goods and double my money in a couple months. Will you endorse my note for that amount? You reflect that he is worth $20,000 and you would incur no risk by endorsing his note you like to accommodate him and you lend him your name without taking the precaution of getting security shortly after he shows you the note with your endorsement cancelled and tells you probably truly that he made the profit that he expected by the operation you reflect that you have done a good action and the thought makes you feel happy by and by the same thing occurs again and you do it again you have already fixed the impression in your mind that this is perfectly safe to endorse his notes without security but the trouble is this man is getting money too easily he only he has only to take your note to the bank get it discounted and take the cash he gets the money for the time being without uh, he gets money for the time being without effort without inconvenience to himself now mark the result he sees a chance for speculation outside of his business a temporary investment of only 10,000 bucks is required it is sure to come back before a note at the bank would be due he places a note for that amount before you. You sign it almost mechanically, being firmly convinced and your friend is probably in, uh, is responsible and trustworthy. You endorse his notes as a matter of course. Unfortunately, the speculation does not come to a head quite, as so, quite so soon as expected and another $10,000 note must be discounted to make up the last one when it's due. To make up the last one when due. Before this, note me- uh, before this note matures, the speculation has proved an utter failure, and all the money is lost. Does the loser tell his friend, the endorser, that he has lost half his fortune? No, no, not at all. He doesn't even mention that he has speculated at all. But he has got excited. The spirit of speculation has seized him. He sees others making large sums in this way. We s- he sees others making large sums in this way. We seldom hear of other losers. And, like other speculators, he looks for his money where he loses it. He tries again, endorsing notes that have become chronic with you. 
and at every loss he gets your signature for whatever amount he wants. Finally, you discover your friend has lost all his property and all of yours. You are overwhelmed with astonishment and grief and you say, it is a hard thing. My friend here has ruined me. But you should add, I have also ruined him. If you have said in the first place, I will accommodate you, but I never endorse without taking ample security. He could not have gone beyond the length of his tether and would never have been tempted away from legitimate business. It is a very dangerous thing, therefore, at any time, to let people get possession of money too easily. It tempts them to be hazardous. It tempts them to hazardous speculations, if nothing more. Solomon truly said, He that hateth short... Ooh. Solomon truly said, He that hateth shortest ship is sure. He who hates being absolutely certain is certain. So, with the young man stating, uh, starting his business, let him understand the value of money by earning it. When he does understand its value, then grease the wheels a little in helping him start the business. But remember, men who get money with too great facility cannot actually f uh, succeed. You must, get, uh, you must get the first dollars by hard knocks and some sacrifice in order to appreciate the value of those dollars.